Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, I'm picking up the last scenario that I saved, where I went from uh, the point where I was just getting ready to come up to the breaking burn at the moon, and then I landed at Brighton Beach. So I'm going to start a new series just from that save point, and in this one, I'm going to try to take off from the moon and go back to Earth. Now, I actually started recording this video once, and then I abandoned that video because I, I just could not remember how to set up Transex, and I didn't want to just have a video where I'm just fumbling and failing. So I went back to my absolute beginner guide, <laughs> interestingly enough, and I watched video 34, 35, and part of 36. And in that one, I gave a pretty detailed explanation of how to use Transex to get back to the moon. And then I also jotted down a few notes. I put those notes up on my upper monitor so that I can hopefully follow along um, with those notes that I took and now successfully get up off the moon, get into orbit, and head back to Earth. So that also kind of brings up another point, which is that, um, you know, sometimes I hear feedback from people who they just, you know, they like the videos, they're very informative and all that, but they, they think that I spend a bit too much time fiddling around with, uh, with the MFDs and not enough time you know, doing like the fun, cool stuff. Well, to that point, if I hadn't had those videos to uh, to remember how to use TransX myself, um, I, I, I would have to like go to forums or maybe talk to Dimitri or something like that. So having those videos with all that level of detail, I think it's very useful. So I'm going to continue doing that. <laughs> with all that said, let me switch camera views over here to the full screen view. Go into the uh, simulator on pause, Welcome aboard, Commander. and uh, just going to just dig right in. I'm not going to go into a ton of explanation on setting up Transex because, again, I do have that absolute beginner guide. And so what I did in that video was uh, brought up Transex on both sides. And over here, I need to have myself in view setup, and I need uh, to select planets, moons, and go to escape. And then on this side, I'm going to go forward, and that will let me view the uh, the eject plan on this side. And what I need to do on this side, according to my video, is bring down... Um, one thing I can do, though, is I can go into uh, view setup on this side, and I can go to uh, view target, just to get a better zoomed-in view at Earth. And the reason that I did that... Uh, was so that I can see my my lines better here in a moment. And I need to add in some negative velocity because we're trying to get back to Earth. And that number is going to be around 800. So you can see as we get to about 800, we start seeing our hypothetical line. And then we'll switch to a finer setting and bring that down. And I remember trying to set it perfectly doesn't matter. So we'll just go with what we have right there. Okay, so we have a uh, fine tune. Now we can go. We can go back to uh, view setup if we like, and change back our change back our scale to view to craft or all. And then we want to shift our attention over here to the left side, and in view setup we want to go to uh, graph projection. And as I noted in my absolute beginner guide the changing the graph projection doesn't have any impact on um it doesn't have any impact on the actual flight it just changes how things look and i've noted that i want to have it set the plan and then we're going to view the escape plan and we want to change our pe distance and usually i go for like 20 or 30 kilometers greater than that number and the easiest way to do that is just to do enter and then I type in whatever number I want without a decimal, so like 1758E3, and that'll set my PE distance or my orbital target altitude as being 20 kilometers above the surface. And then we want to go to scale to view, and, and that's, so that's in view setup. And we want to just change to uh, target, and that just... Uh, the only reason I'm doing that is because it just zooms in the MFD a little bit, but again, doesn't have any impact on what we're actually uh, what we're actually doing. 
and then in the escape plan we want to change the variable to the eject orientation and we just want to uh, do plus or minus on the eject orientation until the white line is over top of the green line and we have two options here we could do it uh, something like that and if we set the eject orientation to this point then I believe that means we take off get into orbit We'll go all the way around the moon and then we eject here alternatively and that would be with the heading of 65 degrees alternatively we can swing the line around the other way and this is how i believe i would normally do this because it just makes for a shorter ride so i just adjust here and now maybe one more adjustment so now that the white line is directly over top of that position and this just means that when i take off get into orbit I will go about a quarter of a way around and then I will eject I, or then I will do my burn so I'll just spend less time in orbit basically so uh, that's that and now we want a if we if we do that we need to have a launch heading of 245 degrees which uh, conveniently is pretty much the way we're headed so so this this particular eject has a couple of benefits. Number one, we're almost headed in that direction, and number two, we spend less time in orbit. All right, let's uh, view to the vessel really quick. Um, let me turn off the the HUD. So we have seven days of locks left. I think that's plenty. I am not sure how much main fuel I need, so once again, I'm just going to top up my fuel. Um, I'm sure that's plenty of APU, so I won't worry about that, and this is probably enough fuel I'm tempted just to go with that amount, but I would feel really dumb if I ran out of gas halfway through my eject burn, and I just don't have a sense, a very good sense anymore for, you know, how much delta V I have based on this. Once I spend a lot of time in orbiter, then I can just kind of look at the main tank and say, oh yeah, this much fuel is more than enough for what I want to do, but again, at the moment, I don't have that feeling. So I'm going to open the fuel hatch. I'm going to go ahead and cross-feed my fuel over to my RCS just to top that up. And then I'm going to open the main and just top that up. Close the hatch. Oops. And our external cooling is already off. And again, we don't need to worry about oxygen because we're only going to spend about three to four days between the Earth and the Moon. So there's... I'm, that 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 one I'm sure of. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to, uh, well, first of all, so the hover doors are open, the retro doors are open, radiators extended. So all of that looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this view. Uh, press Control H again to bring up the HUD. Take a look one more time at my heading, because once you lift up off the uh, landing pad, that heading goes away so if you lift up and then try to remember and, and you don't remember what your heading was it's gone so so 245 so I'm gonna swing to about right there so yeah let's go ahead and do this I'm gonna bring up orbit MFD on this side projection is already set to the ship don't think the frame of reference matters but the PEA APA it'll be better if I can see what that is um, relative to the ground versus planocentric. So PEA, APA. Okay, I'm not, why does it think my altitude is, oh, I, maybe, maybe this is sea level or something, I don't know, maybe I'm two, negative two kilometers, I never noticed that before, but it says that I'm negative two kilometers be, below uh, the ground, so maybe there's a a sea level consideration, but it, here it shows 2.59, which I think is probably more accurate. Not that any of that matters too much, but let's uh, get going here. So I don't think I need the APU running, because I'm not going to be opening or doing anything with hydraulics. So we're just going to lift up, rotate to 245, and head out. So let's get going. <sighs> Take a deep breath, and here we go. And we don't need a ton of hover. We just want enough to get up. Wheels up. And I was in time warp. Um, all right, let me turn off hover completely. I've, that's super annoying. Uh, 
I do need the AP running to where he's landing gear. That's super annoying. I had time warp on, so as soon as I put in hover, it launched me up into the atmosphere, or well, launched me up off the moon. But I'm gonna, I'm not gonna uh, worry about it. We're, we'll try to continue with this flight anyway. Uh, APA is 15. Turn off the level. Go to rotation. Such a rookie mistake. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna put in the full power of the main engine and try to get into orbit. That's so stupid not checking the time warp. Uh, we don't normally, I would lift up and pitch the vessel slightly up, but since I got a huge running start with the time acceleration, I don't have to worry about that. So now I'm just gonna watch the uh, relative inclination and the APA. In fact, I might even tilt the vessel down a bit, to be honest. All right, so relative inclination is coming down. Um, I'm not sure which way I need to rotate to improve it. Looks like maybe that's improving it. So now I'm just gonna go level and, okay, so I have overshot. Let me actually kill the main engine because I overshot the relative inclination. Now it's going the other way and I'm plenty high enough. I'm moving plenty fast enough so I don't have to worry about crashing. Translation. So I'm going to rotate around, re-engage the main engines. Maybe I'll just put in a little bit of main engine. So now the relative inclination is coming back down. Boy, do I feel sloppy with all of this. I suppose it's understandable, but wow. So now I'm just bringing the nose of the vessel a bit around. And it looks like the relative inclination is coming down slowly, so I think we'll just stick with that. Go back to the full power of the main engines and get up to orbital orbital velocity. Looks like that line of nodes is about to swing one more time. Information. APU running. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna mess with that because my I'm gonna my Apple Apps is gonna hit 20 here really soon. And that's when, that was my target, so I would at least like to try to do one thing right this flight. So I'm gonna lower the thrust of the main engines. Don't need the APU running. APA is 17. Relative inclination still slowly counting down, so at least that part's good. Let's go ahead and rotate our vessel so that we're more centered here. Let's go ahead and increase our main engine a bit more. Just trying to slow things. I was just earlier just trying to slow things down so they weren't happening so fast. Because you get into orbit so fast around the moon, it's like you blink and things have gone catastrophically wrong. Speaking of blinking, APA 85. <sighs> All right. So sloppy, but uh, translation. You know, it's. I, I guess, you know, I just need to be a bit less harsh on myself here because it has been a long time. Rotation translation. All right, so we translate. You know, twenty point something. It's good enough. All right, so now let me go ahead and switch over to uh, orbit. HUD, and I'm going to go into the prograde position. So, our... So, we're coming up on apoapsis in 600 seconds. That'll be our opportunity to circularize our orbit, and I think we will do that. Sometimes you reach Oftentimes when you do this flight, you end up reaching the eject point before you reach apoapsis, in which point there's no reason to circularize your orbit. But in this point, in this case, in this flight, we will be reaching apoapsis first. And once you get up off the ground and you know you're trying to get into orbit, the first thing to do, like I always say, is to make sure that you stay in orbit. So the first thing I always like to check is just when am I going to get to apoapsis? And it looks like we're going to get there 
before the eject point, so we'll take care of circularization first. So we're coming up to that point, and we'll just go ahead and take care of this manually rather than relying on burn time calculator just because I don't want to bother opening it up. So I'm just putting in a little bit of main engine and just watching my time to the apoapsis is counting down. And the orbit is coming together. Eccentricity is coming down. PEA is going up. I accidentally bursted the main engines there when I meant to hit the asterisk, but it worked out. ECC is, um, it's, it's, we basically have a circular orbit, so I'm not going to fuss with it beyond that. Okay, so now we want to bring TransX up, and I'm going to view over to, I'm going to go back on this side and view over to Maneuver. And one thing I do remember, and I need to actually work pretty quickly here, but I remember that this eject plan, it, it's based on the time when we were sitting on the landing on the landing pad, and that time has expired. So we now want to set up a maneuver to replace the, uh, the, the, the escape plan. So I'm going to turn maneuver mode on this side and go to my variable uh, prograde. And, I, and in my beginner guide, I saw that I take that number, which so I don't have to try to refigure this out. So I'm just going to enter in my 823.5. Uh, actually, okay, yeah, I did that right. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we're going to refine that. But now I'm going to switch variables over to the date. And we're going to go backwards because we want just a little bit of date adjustment, not a huge amount. Let me actually even go to hyper. And I'm just going to use plus plus to bring that time to do this maneuver around so that it lays over top of the time that we decided that we're going to do the escape plan. And I'm going to go down to the micro setting. And it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up, but uh, that looks like it's perfectly lined up. All right, so that is the maneuver. So then what we want to do on this side is view over to our, um, our escape plan, go through the variables, and we want to get rid of any... Let's see, maybe it wasn't escape plan, maybe it was target setup. Basically, we need to get rid of the velocity that we added for the escape plan. Uh, oh wait, we have to go forward on this side to do that. So we view over to the... wait, that's setup. There we are, jet plan. And we just want to reset this variable so that the maneuver takes priority over the eject plan. So I'm just going to reset that and now the maneuver is taking priority. Our view has warped a little bit, but we can take care of that by going to view setup, going into the graph projection, and just changing it to maneuver, focus or maneuver. I'm gonna go with maneuver. Now, I also said in the video that I made a note of is that we can't actually view the encounter because just just based on the way TransX is set up at the moment. So let me see, how long do we have until we do the maneuver? So we have we have a bit. So we have, you know, uh, more than 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. So I have time. So if I go into View Setup, I can turn Auto Plan off. So turn Auto Plan off. And then I can turn Advanced on and that will let me set my plan type to through point instead of initial and then I can set my plan to encounter and that will allow me to view the encounter which just gives me where did I do that at? you know what maybe I should have done that here so let me actually try that again so in view setup in stage 2 let me turn auto plan off. I think I was supposed to be in stage two. Advanced on, then I can set plan type to through point, and that'll let me set plan to encounter. Right. 
so that will allow me to view the encounter, at least I thought I m must have messed up some part of that direction. Wait, that's set on slingshot. I want it on encounter. There we go, okay. Very fiddly. <laughs> but we, we got it. All right, now, so, so we can refine the encounter now if we want, or we can refine the maneuver by going, I think we'd have to go back. Let me see, view. Yeah, I'll have to go back to stage one on this side. View the maneuver. And now, because the only reason I would maybe do, want to do a bit of refinement is because it says my focus PED is, is this number, which is significantly higher than I would like it to be. Because if I want to target a, a approach at Earth of like 60 kilometers or something like that for an atmospheric braking burn, then, then, then I would want this number to be like 6.371 plus 60. So currently it's, it's way higher than that. Now, the other thing I'm thinking though, is that, um, setting it exactly isn't going to matter because transex isn't accurate enough for for it to be forced to bother with it but it may be worth trying to get it more in the ballpark so what i can do is while maneuver mode is still on i can come around here to my pro grade go to a you know a finer setting like hyper and maybe ultra and i can see that you know adding in ultra or adding in pro grade taking away pro grade is having an effect you know on my minimum altitude so if I add in a little bit more, I'm going to bring that minimum altitude down. And again, you know, normally for a, a braking maneuver at Earth, I probably want something in the neighborhood of, uh, I think, 60 kilometers for, from when coming back from the moon. If I was in orbit around the Earth, I'd probably do more like 40. But So I'm just going to set my minimum altitude at 100 just so that I'm more in the ballpark. And then, because I know that at some point along the way here, we're going to have to do a, um, we're going to, we're going to need a mid-course correction. So let me view over to updates here and just hit update. Okay, so nothing changed here that I saw. And at this point, I'm not trying to worry about base alignment or anything like that because Earth has a thick atmosphere and we can pretty much go anywhere on Earth just by, you know, gliding to where we want to go. Okay, so let's view over to target. Let's get a bit closer to the time to do the burn. We'll we'll complete the we'll complete the maneuver and then we'll end this video and make a new part for what's going on next. I love the fact that we now have you know mountains on the moon. It's other than the fact that I crashed into one. Oh yeah, I can raise up the hover doors. But this is just uh, you know, I mean, this is old to anybody that's been sticking with the orbiter, but this is all new to me, and it just looks amazing. So I'm going to press Control a to turn on the APU, and I think it's Control v for hover. Yeah, so that's re retracting our hover doors. That, that just looks so cool to me. I just, like, want to go back down and land <laughs> and just, like, ride around on the mountains. Uh, Control a to turn the APU back off. So I'm going to get a bit closer to the time to do the burn, a little bit closer, right about there. And then we're going to view over to uh, maneuver one more time and do an update. And yeah, nothing is significantly changing and I wouldn't expect it to. So let's view to the target. Let's bring out burn time calculator for this burn. Uh, and we will, we will get the burn from uh, we'll get the burn from Transex, and it, it, it is worth noting, and somebody pointed this out in one of my comments, that the when you get the maneuver from uh, Transex, it's, it doesn't copy it exactly, and there, there was a reason for that. I remember talking to Enjo about this back, you know, 2014 or whenever it was, and I guess the idea is that you know, because when, whenever you do these kinds of burns, you're pretty much always going to do some sort of cleanup at the end where you're bumping the translation thrusters. 
So when burn time calculator gets the maneuver from transex, it always it always cuts it short by a little bit, and it does that on purpose. So it's not a mistake, um, and that's the reason. If you wanted to, you could manually enter in what we have over here, but I like the convenience of just pressing the get button. And then again, I even if I copied this information exactly, I'm still going to do some kind of manual cleanup anyway. So, so I'm just going to go with what we have here. All right, let's uh, view or let's change variables over to uh, Auto Center, wherever that one's at. It's around here somewhere. There we are. Probably I was probably just one past it, and instead of going forward, I should have just went back. I used to have those variable orders memorized per, pretty well so I could tell like well if I'm on this variable it's faster to go backwards than it is forwards but all that's long gone <laughs> alright let's warp time forward get out to do the burn here so we're almost ready to do the burn so what I'm gonna do I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause here go to the overlay and we'll just go ahead and uh, wrap up this part of the video because I really hate when my videos go over 30 minutes and when we come back we'll go ahead and take care of the burn take care of the, the cleanup uh, head out to earth do any mid course correction that we need to do and and then try to land at some point so I hope you like this video if you did please do hit that like button and I will see you in the next part